Stayallday.com. You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves me, you, him, her, them, and they, everybody, including yourself. Actually, really, this is really about you. Forget all of them. This is about you. Moving yourself to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Then we put all this together. I'm going to put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one daily master class. That is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to work smarter and not harder. Now, this topic, you know, it's funny that I never actually did an episode on this because I get people asking me about this all the time, especially coming from the sports world, athletes who hear some story or I heard that this guy practiced for, you know, eight hours a day or this person practiced for 52 hours straight and that's how they made it to the NBA and this person shot 3,000 jump shots every day and that's how they got good. Dre, how do I know how much time I should spend practicing versus how much time I should spend training? And I used to get this question all the time from athletes and being that, you know, my message is not always directed towards athletes as, as much as it used to be. I don't get the question so much anymore, but I still get it every now and then from athletes. And now in the entrepreneurship world, it's actually even more pronounced with entrepreneurs because the thing with entrepreneurs and freelancers, all of us who are out there, if you're doing your own thing, especially if you're the only one in, one in your business right now, is that we do this. We work harder and not smarter a lot of times, not even realizing it or maybe realizing it, but doing nothing about it. And the thing with entrepreneurs and freelancers is that we're not asking anybody how much work is too much because we don't see a limit. <laughs> we don't see when we may be doing too much work or you know, overworking ourselves. As an athlete, the good thing about the athletic world when it comes to working harder than working smarter is that your body will tell you when you're doing a little bit too much through injuries, through aches and pains and you no know, pulled muscles and you no know, things like that, all types of soreness that you can't perform or practice through, or at least your body is trying to tell you that you shouldn't, but then you might be too bullheaded to listen to it. Your body will tell you when you're doing too much in sports, but in the business world, if you're spending 16 hours a day working every day for three years straight, you look at that maybe as a badge of honor. You get all this hustle porn that you see on social media, or you hear that somebody did that, or you get some, I don't know, Gary Vee, Grant Cardone telling you that's what you gotta do in order to make it happen, and you just keep doing it because you think that's what you need to do in order to be successful. The hard thing with the entrepreneurship world is that there is no, your body's not gonna usually tell you, at least not as acutely as your body would tell you when you're an athlete. When you're an athlete and you're doing too much, your body will let you know in such a way that you can't keep doing that too much. In entrepreneurship, you could be doing too much. Your body will tell you, but in much more subtle ways that you might not even notice in ways that you know, then your body doesn't function the way you need it to function years down the road. So it's been a, a slow process with entrepreneurship. So it's much harder to notice when you're doing too much as an entrepreneur. So what I'm going to talk about here today is how to know or how to decide when to how to discern. That's the better word between working hard and working smart whether we're talking in your business or if you happen to be playing a sport or anywhere in between. What made me think about this was that I just heard, I heard Tim Grover on an interview and Tim Grover wrote the book Relentless. Many of you are probably familiar with that book. Tim Grover, by the way, for those who don't know, he was Michael Jordan's basketball trainer and he wrote that book Relentless. I think I felt uh, that was a great book. He wrote it, him and his uh, co-author Sherry wrote that one. He has a new book coming out. It's called Winning. And I looked at the chapter titles for that book and it's very interesting. It's very, uh, it's very, I guess what nowadays would pass for a toxic masculinity. Just looking at the titles of the chapters in that book. Very interesting to see how people are going to respond to it. But I think Tim knows exactly who his target audience is and I know who his target audience is. And his target audience is not really athletes, honestly. His target audience are uh, white guys over the age of 30 who are in the business world because I know a whole bunch of them who love Tim Grover's work, even, maybe even more than I do. So that book will speak to those people perfectly. But anyway, I heard Tim on an interview. He's just doing promo to promote his new book, which by the time you hear this, the book is already out. So I was just you go read it. because his, his last book was pretty good. This book's going to be pretty good too between him and uh, Sherry who helps him write his books. They do pretty good work. But he was talking about how, because Tim also trained Kobe Bryant. He was talking about how Kobe worked harder than Michael Jordan, but Michael Jordan worked smarter than Kobe. 
Now, you may have your own uh, opinions as to who the better player was. Now, we all know the right opinion is Michael Jordan, but that's besides the point. Kobe, as Tim said in this interview that I heard him talking about, he said Kobe always wanted to do another workout. Kobe always wanted to do more. He wanted to see what he had done, and he wanted to do more. He wanted to try harder. He wanted to ride his bike in the middle of the – he wanted to ride his bike in Arizona, but not in the morning before the sun came out. He wanted to ride in the middle of the day when the heat was at its highest so that he could test himself and challenge himself. Kobe would always just want to do harder, 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 not necessarily smarter, whereas somebody like Michael Jordan – he knew that Tim Grover knew his stuff. So once Michael Jordan had trust, learned to trust Tim Grover, anytime Tim Grover said, okay, Michael, we've done everything we need to do today, Michael Jordan was good with that. Whereas with Kobe Bryant, Tim Grover kind of had to fight Kobe to say enough is enough. And what we're gonna talk about here today is not about Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or even playing basketball, but it's just knowing the difference and being able to discern, again, when, you are, when are you working hard versus working smart? And sometimes you could be doing both, but there are some times where you're only doing one or the other. So let's get into it, point number one. Oh yeah, before I do that, I want you to text me. Tell me from what you hear today, did you get any new insights for yourself about when you're working hard versus when you're working smart? Or what are you gonna do different based on working hard and working smart, putting more time in or just trying to get more effort? Is that really helping you? Did anything you hear today really help you get some insight into that? My number is 305-384-6894. Again, 305-384-6894. Text me anytime while you're listening to this and tell me what has really stood out for you. Point number one, topic again, how to work smarter and not harder. Set your standards, create your system, and trust the process. Let me say those three points again. Set your standards, create your system, and trust the process. See episode number 616, 616. The title is Respect and Trust the Process. Meaning, from the beginning, know where you're going, know what is going to take to get there, and then follow your process one day at a time. Hashtag one day at a time. In other words, if the process says do 100 push-ups today, then do 100 push-ups and go home. All right, don't do 120 because you need to do more. All right, that's when you start working hard and you're not being smart anymore. If you want to beat out your opponents and you feel like your opponents are all doing 100 push-ups, okay, then change your system to where you're doing 150 push-ups a day. And when you get to 150, go home. Many athletes ask me these questions about, you know, how much time should I train? How much time should I spend working out? And I always give the athletes the same question. The, the question is not about how many hours you should spend working out, because if you don't know what the hell you're doing, if you don't have a system, if you don't have a progress, a process, if you don't have you know, just a way that you're going to be doing the thing that you're doing, you don't have any standards that you set, you can spend eight hours a day in the gym and still be a bum. Whereas somebody else can spend an hour a day in the gym and be 20 times better than you, you're working eight times harder than them, but they're 20 times better than you because they know what they're doing and you don't. So it's not about how much time you are spending doing something. It's the same for you entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, you are not exempt from this. Just because you spend 16 hours a day working, it sounds good and it looks great when you make it a meme post about it for Instagram, that does not mean what you are doing is a smart thing to do. It doesn't mean it's gonna help your business take off. It doesn't mean it's gonna make you any more money. So what is your process? What is your system? What are your standards? And are you following them? Do you even have them? These are questions that you need to be answering for yourself. So when athletes ask me something, Dre, I, when can I stop working out? How much time is enough for me to work out? Well, I tell them, well, you got to have a plan. And since you probably don't have a plan, athlete, which is why you're asking me this question, which shows me you don't know what you're doing, you need to go to whoopanbook.com. That's my basketball training products website, in case y'all didn't know. And that's where you can get some programs that can help you out with your game so that I will tell you exactly what to do. Here's where you start and here's where you stop. You got to make a plan up front. And it's for everybody. Have a plan up front for what you are going to be doing before you get to the office, before you get to the gym, before you start writing your book, before you start you no know, marketing and promoting yourself for your you no know, speaking gig, whatever it is you want to do. What do you need to get done today? Is it done? If the answer is yes, then you're done working for the day. Tomorrow, you do tomorrow's work, if, as long as you have a plan in place. But if you don't have a plan, then of course you're going to be just working and working and working and never knowing when to stop because you set yourself up for that. You set yourself up to overwork yourself because you don't have a plan in place. So how do you know when you've done enough work versus when you've done too much work? It's a trick question. You don't know. You will never know because you set yourself up for this failure. Everybody following what I'm saying? Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to work, how to discern between working hard and working smart. Number two, you got to get smart, trusted, uh, knowledgeable, and experienced 
professionals around you and listen to them. Sounds like a novel idea, right? Get people around you who know things that you don't know. People who have the knowledge of how to apply these things that you don't know. People who you trust because you believe that they know what they're talking about. And people who have the experience, meaning they've been out there doing the thing and they have shown you that they can do it. Whether that experience is with others or you gave them a shot and they proved to you that they can do their thing. Get these people around you, surround yourself with these people, and then listen to what the hell they have to say. We've talked about how many times on the show, the law of association, you become the average of the people you spend the most time with. Who do you have around you? You have people around you who you trust that when they give you their word that you believe that they know what they're talking about? Do you? I mean, this is something that, again, this is another question that you should have an answer to. I told you about limiting your associations in episode number 1058, three levels of people, two minute people, two hour people, and two day people. I actually don't have an episode on the law of association, so I'm gonna put that in my notes right now, and I'm gonna do a whole episode on just that point, the law of association. I'm, I'm gonna write that down right now. You can hear me typing, I'm writing it down. Law of association, we'll do an episode on that. I'm surprised I didn't do an episode on that yet. But anyway, this is the second point here. If your trainer is saying to you, okay, we've done enough for today, then listen. Yeah, I get, I just told you that Kobe wouldn't even listen to his own trainer, but listen, you ain't Kobe. All right, Michael Jordan listened to his trainer. All right, so you got two guys who are great at what they do. You, I'm trying to help you out here, all right? Don't think that just because Kobe did it, you need to do it. All right, I only know one Kobe. If you hire a business coach and they say, do this first, then do that second, then do this sec third, fourth, fifth, sixth, don't you decide that you're going to jump up to step seven because you're impatient and you don't want to just follow the process that the coach told you to do. Why did you bring that person into your circle if you weren't going to listen to them? If you bring someone into your circle to help you, to coach you, to guide you, to mentor you, to tell you what the process is going to be, follow the damn process. If you don't trust them and you think you need to overrule them every time they tell you something, then they shouldn't be in your circle. Go find someone who you do trust. And understand something that you do need to have some people around you who can help you with these things because you can't always see yourself in the mirror, so to speak. In other words, all of us as human beings, we have blind spots in ourselves. There's certain things we can't see in ourselves that other people can see in us. There's a reason why hairstylists don't do their own hair. Barbers don't cut their own hair because there's certain things you can't see with your own eyes or in yourself, but anybody else can see them. You follow what I'm saying here? If your trainer says this is enough, that's enough. If your business coach says, don't do any more, don't do any more. All right, this is the discipline that you have to have. So keep this in mind. Don't just jump to step seven. I'm writing down another idea for an episode here that sometimes when I'm talking, I just come up with my own ideas. And when you do this for 10,000 hours, this kind of things happen. So while you do trust the process, at the same time, you got to trust the people whom you have empowered to advise you. If you are constantly overruling people, now maybe every now and then you might need to overrule somebody because listen, even in the books I read about Michael Jordan, I read every book about Michael Jordan, there were times when Jordan was working himself really hard, especially late in his career, especially that, that two year period with the Washington Wizards that most of the time we act like it didn't happen. But for a moment, we're gonna act like it did. That two year period with the Washington Wizards when Michael Jordan was really uh, beating up his body and his knees were not in good shape, and his trainer, Tim Grover, would say to him, like, yo, maybe you need to take a game off or maybe you need to play fewer minutes. And Michael wasn't hearing it. Michael was just saying to Tim Grover, yo, just get me ready. Just get me ready for the next game as best you can. And he would go out and play to the point that Michael had to shut it down that year because his knees gave out on him. You know, a lot of people don't remember that. And we don't need to remember. Let's just act like that didn't happen besides me telling you that story. But if you are, so there were times, I have told you that to tell you this, there were times when you may want to overrule the people around you because you think they may not know as well as you do. Sometimes you're just going off your intuitive feel and you are the boss. You are the CEO of, of you incorporated at the end of the day. You are, do get to make the final decision. But if you find that you are constantly, like every time overruling the people around you, the people who are supposed to be helping you, then they're gonna, first of all, they're gonna stop offering themselves to you and they're only gonna give you the bare minimum because they know their input is not being valued. And secondly, you probably eventually going to get them, those people away from you because they're like, all right, well, I'm making all the decisions anyway. Why do I even need these people around me? Now, again, build your circle with people who you actually trust and you're willing to listen to them. If you're not willing to listen to them, don't have them in your circle. All right, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing them a disservice if you're not going to listen to the people in your circle. So if you have a coach or you're in a mastermind group or you have a mentor or you have a, a parent or you have a, a trainer, listen to what the hell they're telling you. If you don't want to listen to them, Fire them or fire yourself so that you can let them go work with people who want to listen to them and you can work with people who you want to listen to. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is discerning between working hard and working smart. 
Number three, you must identify the right levers. Now, either you need to do this or the trusted people around you need to do it. What, is, what do I mean, though, when I say identifying the right levers? What I mean is, if you run a business, for example, you shouldn't be working on writing better blog posts when the real lever in your business, i.e. the thing that will help your business grow faster right now, is optimizing your advertising. So, in other words, you need to work on the right things. You just don't just go and work on stuff just to say that you worked on stuff. All right, this is a, another challenge that a lot of people have these days, especially in the business world, is they're working, working and working because again, you see the, the hustle porn that's telling you what, that you need to go and do the work and work this many hours and you see these people with their videographers and telling you all the hustling that they're doing, but they have people around them that know what needs to be worked on and they know what needs to be worked on. They might not talk about it as much, but they know. They wouldn't be in the position that they're in the business box if they didn't know what to work on. I told you in episode 1741, why asking the right question is more important than having the right answer. If you are not asking the right question, it doesn't matter if you have all the answers. The answer to the question, understand folks, the answer to the question in your business is not always work harder, put in more time, give more hours. That is not always the answer to the right question. You may be answering the wrong question. Therefore, you just keep working. You're actually putting yourself in a worse position because you keep working hard on something that you shouldn't even be working on in the first place, something that you should have deleted from your business a long time ago. So identifying the right levers means what do I need to work on? Not how much do I need to work? What do I need to work on? All right, this is identifying the right lever in your business. Don't work on your advertising when your biggest problem is your content sucks. So you have great ads, so you're getting people to come to your site, but your content is so terrible that your ads are not converting and you think there's something wrong with the ads. No, something wrong with your content. And don't work on content if you're not running ads the right way. So you got all this great content, but nobody's coming to your site because your ads are terrible and they're not hooking anybody in. So you're spending all this money on ads and it's not working. You're like, oh, it must be something wrong with my website. No, your ads suck. Maybe you need to hire an ads person and you stop doing it because you're not an advertiser. So these are things that you need to you need to figure out what these are. And this is why, again, since you can't see yourself in the mirror, you have blind spots with yourself. You need to get people around you, whether that is masterminding, whether it's your significant other, whether it's a friend, whether you need to sign up for somebody's course, you need to hire a coach, you need to go to a conference. You need to have people around you who can see what you cannot see, who can help you identify the right levers for you to get the outcomes that you want. If you are not identifying the right levers, you can be doing all the work in the world and still suck because you are doing the wrong work, because you are asking the wrong question, because you're not even aware of the question that needs to be asked. This is why you need to get other people around you. And I'll give you a simple litmus test for you identifying the right people around you is that they are not giving you all the answers. They are supplying you the right questions. When you get the right people around you, they will give you the right questions. They are not going to give you all the answers. They will give you all the questions. Though. And the questions will open your eyes to figure things out. Because remember, you're still the CEO of you incorporated or your business, whatever it's called. So you don't need someone to give you all the answers because what, what happens when they go away? Then what you want to do? All right. Th their job is to empower you to figure things out and they're going to help you by giving you questions that you otherwise weren't aware of. That's what a good coach does. That's what a good, even a good trainer does. They're going to answer. People will answer. They'll give you some answers, but not all the answers. You understand what I'm saying? All right. There's a feel that you'll get for this. In sports, for example, you may enjoy lifting weights but it's your lack of flexibility that's the key to you getting to the next level. A good trainer will let you know, listen, I know you like lifting weights, so I see all the muscles you got, but listen, we need to work on your flexibility, otherwise all that, all that muscle ain't gonna help us in the next competition. And if you're not willing to listen to that trainer, then they shouldn't be your trainer. And any of you who's a trainer, if you can't get your clients to listen to you, then what the hell are you doing? All right, so there's a, there's a push and pull there, there's a, there's a game that needs to be played, a balance that needs to be struck. Working smarter and not harder is about knowing what work to do, not just working to be working. All right? Even though you're listening to the guy who has a show called Work On Your Game. Okay? You listen to a guy who works hard. You listen to a guy who puts the time in and you know, does the, the hustling and all of that stuff. But at the same time, I also got to ask myself the right questions or find someone who can help me identify the right questions so I'm not working on the wrong things. So the question you're going to ask yourself here is what work will most help me move forward? That's the question you got to ask yourself. And until you get an answer, you probably shouldn't even start working. Or you can work and be at the same time cognizant, conscious of the fact that you're looking to figure out what is the thing that I need to do next. So you could be experimenting, but make sure you don't just 
dig yourself into a hole of just working, working, working just to say that you did it, which is I find a lot of people do that in the sports world and also in the business world. Let's recap today's class, which is how to discern between working harder and working smarter. How to, how to work smarter and not just harder. Point number one, set your standards, create a system, and trust the process. See episode 616. The process says do 100 push-ups, then do 100, and that's it. If you want to do 150, then set your process to be 150, and then that's it. Do not change your process once you begin. Once you start, that's the process that you're in. That's what you signed up for. Stick to it. Same with the business people. What do you need to, need to get done today? When it's done, you're done. Then do tomorrow's work tomorrow. Point number two, get smart professionals around you and listen to those professionals. If your trainer says we've done enough for today, listen to them. If you hire a business coach and they say do this first, do that thing first. Don't jump up to step seven because you're impatient. When you trust the process, trust the people that you've empowered. If you don't trust them, then they shouldn't be around you and they have no power. Point number three, identify the right levers. If you run a business, don't work on one thing when the other thing is the thing you really need to be focusing on. In sports, lifting weights might be what you enjoy, but it's your conditioning and your cardio and your flexibility that you really need to work on. Working smarter and work other than working smarter and not harder is about knowing which work to do, not just doing work just to say that you did work. Okay, so ask yourself. Are you working smart or are you just working hard? And there is a difference between the two. And you should be able to answer this question clearly and also be able to articulate to yourself how you know. Send me a text and tell me what you're going to do different when it comes to working smart versus working hard based on what you heard today. My number, 305-384-6894. Work on your game. Dre, all day.